Hey guys, what's up? It's Melanie. Today we're gonna work on something kinda cool. We're gonna do a little bit different of a look. Definitely use some different colors than what I normally do. I hope you guys like it. Hang out with me. Are you ready? Here we go. As you can see, some of the original molding that was on this piece is missing. So let's figure out how we can fix that. Having the thought of something always needing to sell in the back of my mind, sometimes it can be very creatively stifling. It's just like stops. You can do all this fun stuff. It doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, it needs to sell. You as a creator have that problem? Man, I do. Anyways, let's get going. We're gonna pull out our IOD molds. The trimmings seem to be the best one, obviously, for obvious reasons. So let's go ahead and get it in there. I'm gonna take IOD's air dry clay, and first we already prepped it with a little bit of cornstarch. That way it'll re release <laughs> nice and easy for me. I'm gonna use my putty knife, pull back the excess, and then we're ready to release our beautiful mold. Regular wood glue will hook it on just fine. You can also use things like E6000. I was cleaning and cleaning and cleaning this piece and man, you know what? I just know it's gonna bleed. After a while, you get the feel and you just know it is. So I already have dark gray primer open. So let's go ahead and give this sucker two coats of dark gray primer. Four colors blended on here to get the look that I was going for. Cherry picked and petticoat pink are not colors that I normally use, but blend it with the letterpress gray and the white swan. I really do like this look. My thoughts were to go for kind of a shaded look. So I want to apply my cherry picked all around those edges, framing out each area to make it stand out and give it a more dimensional look. Going in then with the lighter colors. So um, darker, darker, darker into lighter, lighter, lighter in the middle. Then we just got to work to make sure that we don't have a circle. We don't want a circle ever. If you blended before, you know what that circle is that I'm talking about. With this type of blending, I decided to lay all my colors out there. Once I have them all on there and they're still a little bit damp, I'm gonna get my misting bottle, give it a good spritz, and now it's time to start blending. Start blending, I always have my misting bottle in my left hand. That way it's nice and handy. I can give it a little spritz, just a little spray. That's the difference between the misting bottle and a regular squirt bottle and then you can just keep that paint moving. In this upper section, I made a mistake and I made my trim too light. So that's okay, I just went back in and did it again. And with my misting bottle, it's all right. If it starts to dry up on you, no big deal. Just give it another spritz. It'll reactivate that DIY paint and you can start blending again. Oh, I can learn from my mistakes. What do you know? So since I messed up on that first one and had to do it again, I decided to go ahead and just frame it out with that cherry picked all the way around. Then I could start laying down my color and I would still have my darker all the way around the edges. When I blend, I like to go back and forth, side to side, up and down, even diagonal, blending all those colors together but yet keeping different tones of them and definitely using my nice soft clean on brushes to get rid of any brush strokes that I might have. Of course, I'm gonna use my favorite brushes. Today for my blending, I use my Klingon F40. I love that brush, it's so very smooth. You can watch me as I go back smoothing out the piece. I don't want any brush lines. You just do like a little feather stroke, like light as a feather, like gentle, super gentle. And those bristles are so soft, they'll get rid of any brush lines you might have. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so I'm pretty stoked about all the different variations of color. You can see everything in there with different shades, and I love, love, love that it's not symmetrical. My top coat to go on nice and smooth, so I'm gonna pull out my Klingon S50. up with one hour enamels in clear satin that is my go-to top coat since we're going for a very feminine look on this child's wardrobe let's go ahead and pull out some scraps we have from some iod transfers these roses seem to be perfect to me so let's go ahead and get them on there if you haven't used an iod transfer then let me just tell you how it works. All right, so you get these big sheets and you can cut them up or you can use them as a whole, apply them however you want. Once you have your top coat on, you just use the applique stick that came with it and you do a little rub. It releases the transfer onto your piece and there you go. I used a razor blade to cut in between so that the cabinet doors would still open and close and not tear my transfer. decoupage the drawers and what better way to do it than with DIYs liquid patina or crystal clear chandelier you can call it whatever you want why why Melanie why don't you just use Mod Podge well for one Mod Podge stinks I know you know that for two this one does everything so I can transfer mediums with it I can decoupage with it and I can use it as a top coat so it's nice to have on hand and yeah, works super good. So let's do that. What we're gonna do or what I did was I got an old book and I tore out and kind of cut up the pages so that they were kind of uniform in size. And I put a pretty heavy layer of the medium down, the liquid patina or crystal clear chandelier. Then I went back in and laid my paper down. Then I went back over it and sealed it all up. So that way it'll just stick. Remember, you can find all these products that I use on my website at windmillvintagedesigns.com. Every time you guys purchase from me, you're supporting a small business, keeping us alive and allowing me to continue to make videos. Thank you guys. I appreciate your support so much. Well, the decoupage book pages look pretty cool, but I think we need a little bit more. So we're gonna get into our IOD inks. I am using ocean blue and tomato right now. I'm gonna mix those up. It's kind of gonna make me like a kind of a purple color. Then I'm gonna use this stamp. This is called Lady Chalet. Chalet? Chalet. Anyways, <laughs> let's use our brayer. Get that on there and lay it down. So when you're stamping, you wanna lay it firmly down. Use your hand and go all the way around to make sure that everything is touching and then pull it straight back up. What you don't wanna do is smush side to side. So let's repeat that process and make these drawers just have a little bit more bang. And it's just cute. It looks so cute when you open them from the side. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And remember, only you can make it happen. You guys are awesome. See you next time. forget tell me in the comments below if you like this look what you would went, would have done different or if you just think it's awesome i want to hear all of it but be nice <laughs> okay not my usual color scheme but i really like the way it turned out please let me know what you guys think and if you've used these colors together Everything I do here on YouTube is available for sale at my store in Albuquerque, New Mexico. We're called Windmill Vintage Designs. We're located at 3301 Manal Boulevard. You can also hit me up on my website at windmillvintagedesigns.com. See you guys later.